90s and early 2000s, gross-out humor was all the rage with the kiddos. If you grew up around then, no doubt you remember Garbage Pail Kids, Slime Time Live, Ah, Real Monsters, the gross-out Earthbound campaign with Scratch and Sniff magazine pages that actually stunk. The list goes on and on, and often continues to this day in various kids' shows. Look, I'm a man-child. I grew up physically, but deep down, there's just something about gross-out humor that can still make me grin when it's handled properly. There's a fine line to be drawn between disgust and humor, and striking that balance properly can transport you back to being a kid and laughing at the absurdity of otherwise normal bodily functions. No game better embodies this disgusting design choice than Boogerman, a pick-and-flick adventure. Released in 1994 in the Sega Genesis by Interplay, then later ported in 95 to the Super Nintendo with redesigned levels, more sound effects, and enemies. The world is covered in garbage and pollution. Mad scientist Professor Stinkbomb has managed to save the world, at least temporarily, by inventing the Zapomatic, a mysterious machine that sends the world's litter and pollution straight to Dimension X Scrimmon. Eccentric millionaire Snotty Ragsdale decides to take a job as janitor at Professor Stinkbomb's mansion, built atop the Takey Dump, the world's largest landfill, in an effort to learn more about the Zapomatic and ensure that it can't be used for evil as well as good. To his surprise, he discovers the machine uses Snotrium-357, an extremely rare isotope that converts waste into a particle beam that is fired into a cosmic-oriented, malextruding, misanthropic, ocular, nimbus-warping, astrophysical space and time eradicating basket, better known as a common waste basket. Yes. Really. It's right here in the manual. One dark and stormy night, the unthinkable happens, and a mysterious hand makes off with the Snotrium and retreats to Dimension Excrement. Snotty Ragsdale heads to the restroom to change into his alter ego and disgusting crime fighter, Boogerman, and gives chase. At first glance, Boogerman is a fairly typical 2D side-scroller with a disgusting coat of paint, but what really elevates it is the amount of options Snotty has at his garbage disposal. While many enemies can be jumped on in typical 2D side-scrolling fashion, Boogerman has both mucus and gas meters. By pressing the mucus button, you can flick boogies at enemies, which actually takes a bit of practice to get used to since it travels in a downward arc and has a really small hitbox. The other action button controls your gas. Tapping it while standing will allow you to burp briefly, and tapping it while crouching releases a fart, complete with action text straight from a Batman comic. Holding the gas button can result in up to three different types of powerful gaseous attacks that can be used at range or to break barriers leading to hidden items. Mastering these different attacks and figuring out which work best on which enemy really keeps the game fresh, even if the environments are rather foul. Since your mucus and gas are resources, you'll need to fill them up by exploring each stage. Hidden around each stage are a number of pickups, such as boogers to fill up your mucus meter and cans of beans to give you gas. Instead of a health meter, Boogerman's healthfulness is presented in the color of his cape. Red is what Boogerman starts each stage with, and if he takes a hit, he'll drop down to yellow. If you take another, he'll melt away into mucus. To combat this, capes are hidden around the levels and can even give Boogerman a flashing cape so he can take three hits before biting it. Power-ups are also hidden around the stages. If you find a milk jug that will upgrade your flick to a powerful loogie spit, and while that can sometimes be a detriment due to no longer having the downward trajectory, the upgrade in power definitely more than makes up for it. The gas power-up is the chili pepper. Collecting one of these will enable you to use flaming farts to propel yourself through the air like a jetpack. The last thing hidden around the levels are plungers. If you manage to complete a level with 30, you'll get an extra life. Boogerman can also dig through piles of trash on the ground for these items, like the filthy degenerate he is. Each stage has its own theme, from the goopy town of Boogerville to the black light funhouse feel of Puss Palace, and this theme is often reflected in the level design. Be prepared to climb upwards in Mucus Mountain or climb booger-covered vines in the flatulent swamps. These levels are often sprawling, so there's a lot to explore to find all the power-ups and plungers hidden about. Many levels also allow you to take an alternate, usually tougher route through the sewers, with more items to find or just a different way to tackle the stage. Most worlds have four levels, culminating in a challenging and entertaining boss battle at the end. Should you lose all your lives, you'll be booted back to the first level of the world, unless it's at a boss, at which point the game will generously allow you to continue from the boss. This continue system is handled with a simple four-character password, and pressing start on the game over screen will start you right where that password leads. Every single boss and enemy have so much character, and really makes exploring this gross locale a blast. I mean, just look at all the animation on Boogerman himself. This attention to detail really steps this game up to another level to me. 
you never really know what you're going to see next, and the imaginative minds at Interplay truly shine through in this wacky misadventure. As you tiptoe through trash, you'll be pleasantly surprised by the background tunes. Each track is a bump, especially the flatulent swamps and the boss theme, and especially on the Sega Genesis. Matt Furness, the guy who composed for the hidden gem and musical masterpiece The Lost Vikings, also shows off his grooves here in Boogerman. I'm truly blown away by how good this sounds on the Genesis. By now, hopefully you're itching to play some Boogerman and wondering whether you should play it on the Genesis or the Super Nintendo. The Super Nintendo's hit detection feels slightly better when jumping on foes' heads, and it also adds more sound effects, new enemies, and redesigned levels. But the game was developed for the Genesis, and this is very evident in the soundtrack. I mean, just listen to the difference here. This might be something of a personal preference, but I feel like the level design in the Genesis is just a little tighter, so I think I prefer that version. Regardless of which version you decide on, the gross yet gorgeous visuals, fun and filthy attacks and projectile management, sprawling, sickening locales, excellent soundtrack and attention to detail really makes Boogerman, a pick and flick adventure, a game you should be playing. I'd like to take a moment to thank Harvest Time and Pocket Tim, my two Patreon supporters. By supporting me on Patreon, you really motivate me to keep putting out the best content I can possibly make. Link to my Patreon is in the description, and you too could hear me talk about how cool you are, and possibly score some exclusive Cyberfile merchandise. Hey, thanks for watching! Don't forget to subscribe for more Cyberfile content, and if you like this video, show me with that little thumbs up button. If you liked this video, you might like one of my other videos. You can click right on the boxes to jump to them. Cyberfile, offline.